YouTubers, or maybe I should say Happy New Year YouTubers. Hey, um, I'm preparing uh, a New Year's Eve type meal, um, and the reason I'm thinking of this as a New Year's meal, and believe me, traditionally it shouldn't be, is that the very first time we had this meal was when we were guests of some Chinese students who were uh, foreign exchange students at St. Norbert College when my oldest daughter was a student there as well and she was living in the international uh, house dormitory type thing that they had there and she was invited over and since we live in town um, Judy and I came along and we had this as uh, the celebration of the Chinese New Year's Eve. Okay, so what we're going to do, and you, there's a lot of places you can find it nowadays, is pot stickers. Uh, also called Zhao Tzu, at least if my terrible attempt at Chinese is correct. The version that I'm using is very similar to what we had that night, but um, easier to keep track of because I've got it in a, in a cookbook. So I'm going to be working out of the Yan Can cookbook. Okay, and um, he's got this listed as pot stickers. And as you can see, we have the book is falling apart right at this page, so we've done this a few times. And um, there's the recipe for the pot stickers themselves, and there's a recipe for uh, what he says is a common pot sticker sauce. I'm going to be doing the sauce first, and then we'll get into making the pot stickers. Two of us like the sauce. Uh, one of us, my son, is not a great fan of the sauce. He prefers to use sweet and sour sauce. So we'll have that with dinner tonight too. But um, let's take a look at what's uh, the ingredients and how to make the sauce. Okay, here's uh, the ingredients. I'm going to read the recipe to you and then I'm going to change it as I make this thing because that's how I always do things. Okay, so the first thing we need is three tablespoons of dark soy sauce. I'm going to use about a quarter of a cup. Then we need about three tablespoons of vinegar. I'm going to use about a quarter of a cup. Then we need two, two teaspoons of sesame oil. There's sesame oil. I'll probably use maybe one to one and a half teaspoons two teaspoons of grated ginger. I've got a whole ginger root. I'm going to chop up a bit of it and uh, that's about how much we'll use too. One and a half teaspoons of minced garlic. I've got three cloves of garlic and that's what I'm going to use. Um, a half teaspoon of sugar. I may even cut back on that just a teeny bit. And finally two teaspoons of he says hot oil. This is called Mongolian fire oil. It's hot oil. Basically it's a chili oil. So first thing we're going to do is just chop up the garlic and the ginger, put them into our big measuring cup, measure in the other ingredients, and let this kind of sit for an hour or so while we're doing the rest of it so that the flavors can kind of come together, especially the flavor of the ginger and the garlic. First we'll chop up the garlics. I don't want it uh, so squished that I would use a garlic squisher, but I do want to chop the garlic fairly finely. Okay, that's the first half. Now we'll do the ginger root. I've peeled my ginger root and I'm going to slice it into just smaller pieces, into layers. Then let's um, just take them. It's almost a julienne cut. 
but we'll go even farther than that. By turning it. getting it really small. Uh, the recipe I think calls for grated ginger and I, I prefer this rough chopping to grating. Okay so now what we're going to do is put in the sugar. There's the half teaspoon. We need vinegar, a new, brand new jar, i got to open it. Quarter cup of vinegar. And we're doing a quarter cup of dark soy sauce. garlic and the ginger in. And the sesame oil and the hot oil. Give that a stir. And that's our sauce. We'll just leave the spoon in there because I'm going to have to stir it up a couple more times. Alright, now let's go over the ingredients for the pot stickers themselves. Um, again, I've done the sauce. We're going to work on the filling for the pot stickers, not the, the dough part yet. But let's take a look at the filling. Um, I'm going to read to you the recipe again from Yan Can Cook and I'm going to talk about how I changed that because I never follow recipes exact. well, I shouldn't say never. I follow them often uh, the first time I do something and then I decide how am I going to modify this to suit my tastes. So let's take a look at the ingredients here. Okay, the cookbook starts with a quarter pound of ground pork. So I've got 0 0.89 pounds of ground pork here. Um, three tablespoons of finely chopped bamboo shoots. I've got a can of bamboo shoots. Reese's fancy sliced bamboo shoots. Um, two tablespoons chopped green onions. I've got two shallots instead. My wife always calls these things leeks. I don't know why, but she does. They're not. Four dried black mushrooms soaked and chopped. A cheap can of mushrooms in the grocery store. Uh, a half teaspoon of sugar. I've got my sugar here and I've got my half teaspoon measure. Two teaspoons of wine. In this little ramekin I've got uh, some wine, some white wine. I don't know if you can see it in there. Uh, two and a half teaspoons of soy sauce. Here's my gallon of soy sauce and I'll measure out what I need. One and a half teaspoons of cornstarch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the cornstarch into the wine, get it thickened up and we'll use it as a thickener as we go on. And the recipe calls for one egg yolk. I never use that. So, there's basically where we're at. Now let's get to uh, putting it all together.
it's starting to cook up. Again, we're just going to cook up. I lost it in the scapey there. Just cooking up until the meat is well browned and everything is nicely mixed together in a frying pan. And I know you're thinking, I thought those came in little teeny wrappers. Well, they will, but this is the filling. And we'll get to putting the filling in the wrappers after this is properly cooked through. So, we'll uh, let this continue to cook for a little while. We've reached the point where I think the meat is fully cooked. And um, what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of cornstarch to thicken this up, just a little bit of cornstarch mixed with uh, white wine, just a little bit, give it a quick stir, kind of thicken it a little bit, then we can take this off the heat and begin to fill the chow tzu with, uh, with this mixture. Kind of let it cool just a little bit so we can handle it by spoonfuls. Turn that heat off. Okay, the next step will be at the kitchen table. And what we need is an army of workers uh, to fill all these uh, chow tzis or these uh, pot stickers into their individual little pieces and roll them up. Okay, so here's the next step at the table. We don't make the pot sticker dough like a lot of people would do and make them real thick with dough. What we do is buy um, wonton wrappers or in the case of that batch that she's got there they're called Goiza. G-Y-O Z Y something like that. Goizy, Goiza wrappers. I can't pronounce those Japanese and Chinese things in English. But anyways so what we've got in the little round ramekins is just plain water. You can sit down. <laughs> and um, what we're going to start doing, and I'll sit down after I'm done filming one or two of these, is uh, starting to wrap. You really chopped these big. Yeah, I know. I chopped them a little bit large today. I didn't chop quite as finely as I usually do. So, we're going to roll those up. I was going to say, there has to be a tray to put things on. There's a tray to put things on. And basically, we're using water to um, dampen the edges so that when we roll them up, they stick together. To glue them. Did yeah. you put some sauce Yes, I did. Doesn't look like it. I poured in a bunch of soy sauce right out of the gallon container. So you can see we've got an assembly line going here. There's other ways you can roll these too. This is just the quick and fastest. And as you can see, each person has their own very minor variations on what they're doing. And here's the size of what we get. Um, I'll give you a hand comparison. There's the size of what we're after. And we're setting them on racks that we're going to steam. So what we'll do after we get uh, these racks fully loaded, they'll go on to, um, the, the steaming rack will go on to our wok with a lid on it, and they're going to steam. Now some people steam first and then um, put them in a frying pan and brown them. Some people just put them in a frying pan and add a bit of water and let that steam right in there and then they brown when the water evaporates. There's all kinds of ways you can do this. Uh, we prefer them just steamed. So this is the assembly process. She's making a rather fancy looking one there. Just to show that they can come in different shapes. We'll do one more like that. A 
Okay, so I'm going to put the camera down and sit at my place at the table and help put these things together. Oh, she's using the round wrapper that is there. We've got to get a picture of that. Then I'll sit down and start helping. We got this fancy um, gadget for squishing them together. And it makes them look pretty. So there you go, that's um, a, couple more of those. a couple various shapes that we can do. want to stick. I know, it's being obnoxious. Okay, my turn to sit down and start uh, filling these things or I won't get anything to eat. Yeah. Well, you want to cross in front of the camera. That's okay. All right, so here we go. We're just opening up the wok. The only thing in it right now is water. Looks like a bloody steam engine because I've got it on high. Put the first batch of um, Chiaozi onto the steamer and cover it up. And we're going to let it go for, I don't know, two, three, maybe four minutes. Until uh, we look at them, they look, until the dough gets kind of translucent looking, is the idea. Okay, so we've got the second batch sitting right here. They have not been steamed yet. And. The ones that are in the steamer are right there and they're about to come off. Yes, there's a lot of steam there. Okay, so can you see what I mean by I want the, um, the, the outside to be a little bit translucent? Take that off. Bring it over to the table. Put the next batch onto the steamer. And we'll cover that up. And while the second batch is steaming, we get to eat. Okay, now it's time to do the official taste test and see how these things went. So, take my first one. I'm going to dunk it into a little bit of this this sauce. You can kind of see it's in the sauce that I made. Hmm. I love these things. They're fantastic. There's the sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> They're hot now. This is the second batch off the um, off the steamer. We have um, finished the first batch that came off the steamer, and we've. Um, made a few thought, got a few thoughts on it. You can see that these over here are the ones that were wrapped in the square wrappers and these here are the ones that were wrapped in the round wrappers. A um, couple of thoughts is the round wrapper is a little bit thicker and therefore that could easily stand being put into the fry pan and done with the fry pan heat and a little bit of browning on it. Uh, it can stand up to it. The wonton wrappers, the square ones, can't handle that quite as well. Unless you double them up. Yeah, yeah unless you double them up. And then they're almost too thick. At least in my opinion. The other thought is, um, tonight I used a couple of shallots instead of green onions. Um, usually we use green onions. And I think that um, the green onion would be a better deal. This is a little bit too much onion flavor more than uh, we usually taste. So my thought would be one batch of green onion or, or um, you know, fresh onions, uh, finely chopped, works better in this than shallots. There you go. Jiaozi, don't ask me how to spell that, or pot stickers, except we don't bake them, we, or fry them, we simply boil or steam them. And we love to eat them. They're a fantastic meal. And like I say, our first introduction was Chinese New Year's, so I think of these as a New Year's meal. 
but we have them any time of year. If you like my channel, I would appreciate if you'd subscribe. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you the next time around on YouTube. Bye-bye.